Happy Tuesday and welcome back. I hope you had a great weekend. You will need your calendar today. Your money packet, we will be doing beyond $10. And stack those bills. I will be reading you a story. Have you got my purr? And after the story, we are going to complete this living and non-living worksheet. What I need you to do is cut these words out if you have not yet done so. If you need to catch up, just put me on pause. Please stand up for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Nice job. Okay, looking at the calendar. Find the top, the middle, and the bottom. And at the top of your calendar, find the month. What month is it? Top or bottom? It is May. Well done. Now looking at your calendar, yesterday was Monday. It was Monday. What special holiday was it on Monday? It was Memorial Day. Very good. And why do we celebrate Memorial Day? Why do you think? We celebrate Memorial Day to honor those veterans, um, people of service that have passed, whether they were in the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, so that is why we celebrate Memorial Day, to think about the people who died um, fighting for our country. Okay, so yesterday was Memorial Day, and that was the 25th, and that was Monday. So if yesterday was the 25th, what is today? What is today? Today's date is the 26th, and if yesterday was Monday, what's today? Today is Tuesday. Very good. And if today is Tuesday, tomorrow will be Wednesday, the 27th. Let's check the calendar to make sure I'm correct. Yesterday was Monday, the 25th. Today is Tuesday, the 26th, and tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow, Wednesday, will be the 27th. Okay. Find the year. What year is it? Point to the year. It is 2020. Very good. And what is the season? The season is still spring. And the weather for today? Well... It's sunny, and it's also partly cloudy. Sunny and cloudy, and it's warm today. And it's a bit windy. There's a little bit of a breeze. What I would like you to do is get out your money packet. We are going to do bills beyond $10. Can you find this? Before we begin, let's do a quick review on money and paper money. This is a what? A dollar. We know it's worth 100 cents. It's worth $1 because of the one. This is a $5 bill. We know this is worth $5 because we see the five. How much is this worth? Very good, $10. There's the 10. And this is worth, two zero is $20. Excellent. Okay, please remember to put your name and today's date on your paper so you get credit for it because I will be collecting all of these papers, all your worksheets. I want you to get credit for them. Okay, circle all the $20 bills. Hmm. Let's see. 
Which one is a $20 bill? Is it the top one or the bottom one? If you guess the top one, you are correct. You saw the two and the zero, and this is the back of it. $20. Well done. So this is what we're looking for, a two and a zero, a 20. So let's be focused, do good scanning, take our time, and see what we come up with. Okay, so we're just doing the top part right now. Circle all the $20 bills. Well, that is the back of a 20, which looks like this. That is a front of a 20. That's the front of a 20. See the two and the zero? That's how we know it's a $20 bill. That is a $10 bill. This is a $20 bill. And this is a $5 bill. Now, it says circle all of the $50 bills. We're getting into big dollars here. Now, we need to find $50. Now, if you look quickly, the $50 bill and the $20 bill look alike. You, you just have to really look at the two and the five. Look at them closely so you don't make a mistake. All right, there's two different presidents on the $20 bill and the $50 bill. So we have Andrew Jackson on the $20 bill. He was a president. And we have Ulysses S. Grant. He was also a president. And we can get more into them later. And on the $100 bill, we have Benjamin getting windy, sorry. Benjamin Franklin. And we'll talk more about Benjamin Franklin. He was an amazing man. He made all kinds of inventions. I think we spoke briefly about him in September. Okay, so now what are we looking for? We are looking for $50. $50 bills. Okay. Circle all the $50 bills. Is that a $50 bill? Yes, it is. President Grant's on there. What about this one? No, that's a $20 bill. Andrew Jackson's on there. We're not going to circle that. Now, this is what the back of a $50 bill looks like. Does that match this? It does. So we are going to circle that. And remember... That's how we can tell the value of paper money. It's written right on there, the number, 50. Now that's kind of tricky. That's a $5 bill. Now we know this is not a $50 bill because there's no what? There's no zero, right? There's just a five. So that is a $5 bill and we're not gonna circle that. And this has a five and a zero. So that is a $50 bill, and we are going to circle it. You definitely don't want to lose a $50 bill. You don't want to lose any money, but a 50 that's a lot of money. Now we're getting on to the big money. Circle all of the $100 bills. Well, Benjamin Franklin is on the $100 bill. That is the front. And this is the back. And because it's so breezy outside, I have to be very careful that my money doesn't blow away. I have to be responsible and pay attention. Okay, so I showed you the back of a $100 bill. And it looks like this. So we are going to circle that. That is a $100 bill. You definitely don't want to lose a $100 bill. There's Ben Franklin. One zero zero. Now, how does the hundred dollar bill differ from the ten dollar bill? 
let's do a comparison. Well, for one thing, two different men on there, okay? And then look at the value. The $100 has two zeros and the 10 only has one, okay? That's how you can tell the difference. Always look at the number. If we turn it around, on the $100 bill, the number is very prominent. $100, $10. All right, let's keep searching. How much is this one worth? That is a $5 bill. And that is worth five, so we're not circling that. That is a $100 bill, we're circling that. And that is the back of a $100 bill, so we're circling that. Okay, so how many 20s? Let's count, one, two, three. So if we're counting 20s, we're counting by two. 20, 40, 60. There's $60 in 20s. And then how many 50s? One, two, three. Two fifties that equals a hundred, so that's a hundred and fifty dollars. And how many hundreds do we have? We have one, two, three, four. So that's four hundred dollars. You guys are doing really good with this money. I'm very, very proud of you. Okay, let's do the next page, which is stack those bills. So we have to like really take our time and pay attention to what we're doing because we have to do multiple things. We have to put an X on the dollar bills, a check on the $5 bills, and we have to circle all the $10 bills. So what are we working with here today? Let's see, I have a lot of money here. I have to be very careful it doesn't blow away. Where, where should you keep your money? Where's a safe place to keep your money? In your pocket, yes, but it could fall out. What about a wallet? You should keep your money in a wallet. Should you keep a lot of money in your wallet? No, you should keep your money in a bank, but you can have spending money, and when you do, you should keep it in a wallet, and you should keep like no more than 10 bucks. So we're working with dollar bills, $5 bill and a $10 bill. Okay. So what do we have to do with the $1 bill? We have to put an X on all the $1 bills. All right. Can you find a $1 bill? That looks like a five. There's a $1 bill. So we're going to put an X. That says five, that's the back of a $1 bill. So we're gonna put an X. Let's look down this column here. We have a $10, a $10, a $5, there's a $1, put an X. There's a $5, right now we're just looking and scanning for $1 bills. And when you find one, you're gonna put an X on it. That's a $5 or $10, that's the back of a $1, so we're gonna put an X. Okay, great. The next one is a $5 bill. We're looking for a $5 bill, and we're going to put a check on all the $5 bills. There's a $5 bill. That's the back of a $5 bill. That's a $10 bill. $10, $10, that's a $5 bill. The last one in this row is also a $5 bill. $5, we're checking the $5 bills. $10, and that one, what do you think that one is? Good, you saw the five, that's a $5 bill. Okay, now the last thing we have to do is we have to circle the $10 bills. Not to get confused with the $1 bills, 
We won't because 10 is a 1 and a 0. That's the front, and this is the back. Here we go. The last one in this row is a $10 bill. The first one is a $10 bill. $10. That's the back. Let's look. Is that a $10 bill? Yes, it is. Okay. So how many dollar bills? Well, we have to count which ones has the X. One, two, three, four, five. Let's see if we're right. I didn't hear everybody. Count with me. Ready? Nice and loud. One, two, three, four, five. So if we have five one dollar bills, we have five dollars. Okay, the next one. How many five dollar bills are there? Let's see. One, two, we're counting the ones with the checks. Let me hear you. One, two, three, four, five, six. So we're going to count by fives. What is six times five? Well, let's count by fives. Five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. So we have thirty dollars in five dollar bills and how many ten dollar bills do we have those are the ones that we circled so we have one two three four now when we count ten dollar bills we count by ten so we would do ten twenty thirty forty dollars that's a lot of money on this page $75. Okay. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to use a calculator to add this amount and see what you get. Good job. Tomorrow we're going to do money holders, so if you could please cut these out so that you're prepared. All right, now you can relax unless you haven't cut out your living and non-living page cut the bottom of this out I'm gonna cut the bottom of this out you can do it while I'm reading the story have you got my purr and while I'm reading the story I want you to think about whether things are living or non-living What's living in this book and what's non-living? How do we know if something's living or non-living? Well, we ask ourselves some questions. We do observations. Does it make waste? So does it poop? Does it reproduce? Does it make babies or does it make eggs? Does it need food, water, air to breathe? Does it grow? Can it move on its own? Okay, here we go. Have you got my purr? I see a lot of living things in this picture. Kitten was sad. She could mew, she could hiss, and she could yowl. But she couldn't make the noise that she liked the best. She couldn't purr. Mother, she said, I think I've lost my purr. Little one, her mother replied, you will find your purr. Just wait and see. There's a friend right beside me. Would you like to see her? Her name is Freckles. Hold on, let me see if I can get her. Freckles, have you lost your purr? Have you lost your purr? No, you have not lost your purr. This is my uh, pet cat. Her name is Freckles. And she's an older cat. Isn't she beautiful? Mwah. I love her to pieces. She's about 12. She's getting old. Okay. She did not lose her purr. 
Can you hear the chickens? And the rooster? Wait, the determined kitten set out in search of her purr. She decided that dog might have it. Dog kitten asked, have you got my purr? Do you think the dog has her purr? Hmm. She climbed onto his belly to listen closely to his answer. Woof, woof, said the startled dog. I have a woof, not a purr. Why don't you ask cow? She may have it. Do you think the cow has the kitten's purr? So Kitten went off to do just that. She found a perch next to the paddock and very near Cow's head. Cow, Kitten said, looking her right in the eye, have you got my purr? Dog says you might. Moo, moo, said the cow quickly. I have my moo, but no purr. Why not ask Pig? Kitten slid slowly down the tree and scampered over to the pig pen and up the fence. Pig, have you got my purr, she called over the snuffling of the piglets. Oink, 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 said Pig. I'm sorry, dear. I have only my oink. No purr. Why don't you ask the ducks? They are a noisy family. So Kitten followed the sounds of splashing and found the ducks enjoying their day-long bath. Ducks, I've asked dog and cow and pig, but they don't seem to have it. Have you got my purr? Quack, quack, said the ducks. Does that sound like a purr? We quack, one duck offered kindly. Why not ask mouse? That rooster is very noisy. You would think I lived on the farm. I think I might. Okay. This would be tricky, but Kitten really wanted her purr back. She scooted over to the mouse hole, got down on her belly, and wiggled through. Don't be afraid, mouse, said Kitten very quietly. You see, I'm searching for something. Have you got my purr? Squeak, squeak, said mouse nervously. I have my squeak, kitten, but I do not have your purr. Have you asked squeak? I mean sheep. Squeak, squeak. A little discouraged and very tired, kitten hung her head and wandered over to the field. Sheep, she sighed. I have lost my purr. Mouse says you might have it. Have you? Ha do you have my purr? Bah, bah, said sheep. I haven't got your purr, little one. My old bah is all I have. Why not ask owl? Oh, I gotta show you something really quick. This is really cool. The ladies are out. Can you see them? Can you see them behind me? Those are all the chickens. Look, they're coming to say hello. I wonder if there's any chickens in this story. Hello, girls. So Kitten stumbled sleepily over to Owl's tree and said, Owl, I have searched all day. I'm so tired. Have you got my purr? Hoot, hoot, Owl said. Silly Kitten, I have a hoot, not a purr. Why don't you go back to your mother? I'm sure, you're sure you will find your purr there. Let's see if we can get a better look at the girls. Let's see. Hi, girls. Let's see, can you see them? Through the fence. See, they're eating. They're looking for bugs. Pretty cool, right? All right, let's see what other animals we can find in this story. Kitten couldn't believe it. Has mother had my purr all along? She wondered. She rushed back to the barn to call out her question one last time. Mother, have you got my purr? Oh 
Oh, sweet thing, said her mother tenderly. No one can take your purr. It's inside you. You hear it when you're happy. Come here and listen. How many of you have a pet cat? Have you ever heard a cat purr? When a cat purrs, it means it's very content or happy. So Kitten snuggled next to her mother. And suddenly, what do you think happened when the kitten snuggled close to her mother? What happens when you snuggle close to your mom? You feel content and you feel happy and safe. There it was. The dog did not wolf. The cow did not moo. The pig did not oink. The ducks did not quack. The mouse did not squeak. The sheep did not bat. The owl did not hoot. They all watched from the door and listened silently to the most perfect purr they had ever heard. She found her purr. So, what do you think? How many living things are here? Let's look back in the story because they have a list. So the dog, the cow, the pig, the ducks, the mouse, the sheep, the owl, are they all living? They are. And why are they all living? Because they, what do you think? Because they, let's, because they eat? They do. All those animals in the barn, they eat. So, if they eat, we're going to put them, which column? Living or non-living? If something eats, it is living. So, get your glue stick out. I'm going to put a line. I have to take cover. It's nice out, and I wanted to do class outside today, but it is windy, so it makes it a little challenging. Okay, eat. Living. Okay. All those barn animals, the chickens, the cat, the dog, the owl, the cow, they all breathe. You breathe. So you are living. You eat and you breathe. What about creates waste or poop? Do animals poop? Absolutely. Everybody does. Humans do it. There you go. That's how you know that something is alive. A nicer way to say that is create waste. Okay, let's see. Has babies. Well, we know dogs have babies and cats have babies. And we know chickens lay eggs and birds lay eggs. So that would be alive. You were once a baby. Has babies. Thinks. That's very interesting. Do you think? Do animals think? Yes, they do. Animals are very smart. They have families just like you do. They have friends just like you do. Oh, look. Speaking of which... Let's see. Let's see if you can. Can you see all of them? They're a family. They're all together hanging out on this beautiful day. Can you see the rooster? Isn't he beautiful? And they have personalities too. Animals have personalities just like you. All right moves on their own. I'm not talking about cars or bicycles or toys. They have to be able to move on their own. That's how you know something is living. Animals move on their own. Okay, let's see what we have here. Now, non-living doesn't need water. If something doesn't need water, then it's not alive. Non-living. Plants need um, water, humans need water, animals need water. Doesn't eat. Well, if you don't eat, you're not alive. Dolls do not eat. Swing sets do not eat. Furniture doesn't eat. 
and it doesn't eat because it is not alive. Non-living means not alive. It doesn't grow. Well, animals grow, humans grow, plants grow because they are living. If this doesn't grow, then it is not living. I think my glue already dried up. And the last one will live forever. Well, I don't know about the word forever, but if something lasts a long, long time, then it's not, that's a hard. Because trees last for hundreds of years. Um, even people can live to be a hundred or over. But when we say forever, we're going to talk about centuries. So we're going to talk about hundreds and hundreds of years. And there have been things that have survived for hundreds of years, um, like buildings and pottery. Um, but those things are not alive. So we're going to put them in this category non-living. You did a great job with that. I cannot wait to see you tomorrow and hopefully everyone will join me on Thursday for our virtual classroom lesson uh, session via Zoom. So I will send out reminders. It's really important that you attend. Okay, I'll see you soon. Bye.